Welcome to Electron Line. For our next identity, this is kind of a handy identity, we're going to try to determine the hyperbolic cosine of x plus y. We know that with trigonometric identities, that comes in quite handy. The approach we're going to take is the following. We're first going to solve for the product of the hyperbolic cosine of x times the hyperbolic cosine of y. And then we're going to do it again for the hyperbolic sine of x times the hyperbolic sine of y to see what we get. And then we'll have an idea of how to solve for that. So let's do that. So here we end up with e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2. And then we multiply that times e to the y plus e to the minus y divided by 2. When we do that, we get the following. Of course, in the denominator, we're going to get 4. So take that divided by 4. And in the numerator, we're going to get four terms. We get e to the x plus y. Then we get plus e to the x minus y. And we have plus e to the minus x plus y. And we get e to the minus x minus y. Let's now do the same for the hyperbolic sine. So here we have the hyperbolic sine of x times the hyperbolic, oop, I was going to write cosine, hyperbolic sine of y. And when we multiply, we get the following. It will be e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2. And we get e to the y minus e to the minus y divided by 2. So now when we multiply, again, we get four terms. So we'll get a 4 in the denominator. So this is equal to 4 in the denominator. In the numerator, we get four terms again. So this will be e to the x times e to the y. Or I shouldn't, well, let's see here. Let's write it as e to the x plus y. And then this times this will get minus e to the x minus y. Multiply these two, it'll be minus e to the minus x plus y. And finally, when you multiply those, you get plus e to the minus x minus y. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add those two together. So we're going to take the result of the first product. And we're going to take the result of the second product. And we're going to add them together. In other words, we're going to take the cosine, hyperbolic cosine of x times the hyperbolic cosine of y and add that to the hyperbolic sine of x times the hyperbolic sine of y. And let's see what we get. And of course, I ran out of room a little bit. So let me move over. So first of all, notice we have an e to the x plus y divided by 4 and an e to the x plus y divided by 4. When you add those together, that's two of them. So it gives us 2 e to the x plus y divided by 4. The next, notice we have an e to the x minus y and a minus e to the x minus y. So those two cancel out. Then we have an e to the minus x plus y and a minus e to the minus x plus y. So those cancel out. And finally, we have an e to the minus x minus y and then e to the minus x minus y, we add those together. So that gives us plus 2 times e to the minus x plus y. I can go ahead and write it like this, divided by 4 as well. And then you realize that if I cancel out the 2 and the 4, this gives me a 1, this gives me a 2, this gives me a 1, this gives me a 2. And notice when I do that, I have e to the x plus y plus e to the minus x plus y, both of them divided by 2. That is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of x plus y. So that goes on the left side. So this is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of x plus y. And that means that if we add, or in other words, if we take the hyperbolic cosine of the sum of two functions, or the sum of two variables, I should say, because these aren't really angles, these are areas. So if we take the hyperbolic cosine of x plus y, we can write it out like the hyperbolic cosine of x times the hyperbolic cosine of y plus the hyperbolic sine of x times the hyperbolic sine of y. So we kind of got there to the back door, but it seems to work. And there's our identity for 
the equivalent identity for the double angle in trigonometry, but here in hyperbolic cosines, notice it's a little bit different. This is the result that we would expect when we do the, the double angle for the sine, but for the hyperbolic for the hyperbolic functions, it's actually reversed compared to the trigonometric functions. So take a look and you'll see the difference. On the next video, we'll do the hyperbolic sine of x plus y, and again, you'll see a similar result. And that's how we do that.